Good morning. This is going to be a tutorial to do textures in TTV on a photo, but then also make it uh, an 8x10 that you could frame if you wanted to. You need to pick one of the photos that you took that is someone looking away. Texture on a face when it's looking straight on kind of looks funny, so you kind of want to do one that looks away. So this is a photo that someone took and I am going to play around with it. Really, it's completely your opinion and what you think works best. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to resize my image. I need it, right now it's 38 inches wide and 50 inches tall. It's a little bit too large to work with. So I'm going to change that down. I'm going to make it um, an 8 by 10. So I'm going to make it 8 wide and 10 tall because uh, my photo is going up and down. If yours is going the other direction, you need to make it 10 wide and 8 tall. Make sure you make the resolution 300. We want as many pixels um, per inch as we can. So I've resized my photo. It didn't really change it too much because I kind of kept that same dimensions, but it is smaller. I can work with that now. The next thing you need to decide is what textures you want to use, what your overall look that you want. So here's a picture of the tree bark I took, a picture of some rock pavement, I think this is in front of our gym, and then one of you took this photo of paint. I'm going to start with this photo of small rock. And the first thing I'm going to do is change that to a black and white. So if you go to enhance, adjust color, remove color that will make your photo black and white. So I'm going to start with that. You then drag that onto your photo. Of course it's going to cover it up. I'm going to kind of bring that in. I'm going to hold the shift key and turn that rock uh, 90 degrees so it matches my photo and then I'm going to make that a little smaller so it's more on my photo and then what you're going to do is I'm going to blend this so you're going to use the blending modes and you're going to use an overlay now you can see that that texture is on my on me on that picture and you may like that you might not it might fit your picture it might not so you can try different things the other thing is maybe you want your photo to be black and white also so if I click on my photo the background and I go to enhance, adjust color, remove color. It will then take the color away from my photo. That looks a little bit different. Got that texture in with the black and white photo. So that is one way to put texture on a photo. And I did black and white in both. I'm going to undo that and uh, go back to my original photo. I'm going to undo that. Now I could make this to a um, more of a sepia color. If you remember we went to our uh, adjustment layers and if we do photo filter we can use that sepia photo filter um, and then turn up the density of that color a little bit and then push OK. Now I can put that back over my photo. Whoops. See if you these are separate and that won't work you've got to flatten that image first. So something to remember. Now I can move that down to my photo. Again it uh, covers that up so I'm going to hold the shift key get my kind of turn arrows. I'm going to turn that again just to fit the shape of my photo and bring that in some. And again, I'm going to use the blending mode of overlay, and now I have a little bit different color. Now I can do the same thing with my picture. I'm going to go ahead and go to Photo Filter. Notice I brought, I put that above my photo so that I'm changing the photo, and I'm going to go ahead and click back to Sapia, and I want to turn that up so that there's more of those browns. Now notice I didn't take the color out first. So I have kind of a brown with that photo. If I want to get rid of the color first, then I could go to my adjustment layer. Oh, whoops, sorry. I could go to my image first. 
adjust the color, remove the color, make it black and white, and now I can add a photo filter to that and make that sepia and then turn that up and then I get those browns in the photo which is pretty cool, I kind of like that. If you don't like the texture, you can check it out, kind of turn it off and add the texture. If it's too much, turn that, you can use the opacity to turn, you know, pull back that texture so it's not quite so strong. So you can have, whoops, I'm turning down the opacity of the coloring. Make sure you're on the right layer. You can turn down the opacity of that texture and, um, you know, bring it in just slightly if you want. I think I'm going to bring it in just slightly um, and play with that. Now there's a couple other things I want to do. I put a folder in your um, home directory. It is called Texture TTV and there's some different um, things you can use on that also. I'm going to pull a little more brown. I'm going to use this texture. It's called Subtle Grunge 5 and uh, open that up and then I'm going to pull that down on my photo also. Now it went underneath and I want it to be on top. So again I'm going to rotate this because I chose a picture that's up and down and I need it to be a little bit bigger so I'm going to use that and again textures always you're going to do an overlay and you can see that it kind of just made that brown a little more strong which I kind of think is cool. I'm going to leave it that way. And then I can go back to my um, texture and TTVs. TTVs are um, have dark edges because they allow you to kind of frame and keep that in. I already have a pretty dark, so I'm going to keep a lighter frame for my um, TTV. I'm going to pull that in. And again, I'm going to bring that onto my photo. Again, it brought it underneath. I'm going to lift that up. I want it to be right underneath the brown layer. So, whoops, right on top first. I need to make that um, bigger. First, I'm going to hold my shift key and turn that. Whoops, it's not quite straight, is it? Uh, hold my shift key and turn that to 90 degrees. And then I'm going to go right to the edge of my photo with this um, TTV texture. Now this is different. When you have these darker edges, I want that to show. So I am going to move that down underneath the brown, but I am still can't see myself. So you're gonna on this you're gonna use a blending mode multiply. And you can see that the dark edge still shows. Multiply makes the lighter part see-through and the darker part not see-through. I still think my brown is a little bit too much. I'm going to turn that the opacity of that down just a little bit. So now I have um, my sapia brownish color with my texture plus a couple other textures on top of that. Now you can play around with it. If I move this one above then it lightens it up a little bit. Um, if I turn this back up with the opacity I have more browns with the lighter over the top. I actually kind of like that a little bit better, I think. So it's really playing around with what you want to have. Once you have your photo the way that you want it, you have all these layers over here, once you have your photo the way that you want to have it, then you are going to flatten that image so that all the layers become a single thing. At this point, you're going to create a new document that has a, you want it the same as your photo. Um, I'm going to make a width of 8 and a height of 10 with a resolution of 300 and I'm going to make that white. So I'm going to now put my photo down onto that white background. Now they're the same size, so I'm going to move my photo down a little bit and move that kind of off to maybe the center a little bit, maybe right about there. Now this is where you can start adding um, shapes behind it to color that, which I've done that tutorial before, but if, you're, if you don't remember, I'm going to go ahead and try to get this, um, actually I'm going to scroll in a little bit. 
I'm going to use the color picker and try to get this darker color on my hair and color the background that darker color um, to for my background. But I want my photo to kind of have a little bit of pop, a little bit of kick. So I'm going to right click and do a rectangle tool and I'm going to choose the lighter color from my skin and I'm going to create right underneath my photo, so I want to be clicked on my background, I'm going to create a square that's just a little bit bigger than my photo to create that background border so that my photo kind of stands out a little bit. And I could create another one of those with just even, if I use my color picker, with just even this lighter color of my hair and I think that color might be better so I'm going to go back to my shape and paint it to that a little bit darker color I like that a little bit better alright so the next thing I'm going to do is it's pretty cool to find a quote or maybe a saying that you um, like and add that to your um, picture. Now you can see that I have a font of 946 points. It's much bigger than my um, whole photo. So I'm going to go back down to like a font of 95 maybe. And that still seems to be a little big. So how about 72? Um, oops, 72. There we go. All right. So I could type, and I want that lighter color again. I think I'm going to do live. Oh, I don't like that font. I'm going to change a different font. I want one that's more dreamy, I guess. Maybe this one. Live. Whoops. Live. Laugh. Love. And then I can move that maybe down over here a little bit. And then, you know, always remember that you have your um, effects, layer effects over here. I don't want an outer glow, glow, but I think it'd be cool to have a dark shadow under my words. Just a little bit to kind of pop that out. Um, so you can kind of see what I did there. I maybe don't like that so much. Um, so, and I might, might be helpful if I um, bold that a little bit. Now I have a little bit. There you go. So then there, make sure your words are not so close to your edge because that ends up getting cut off. So once you have your whole project, then you're going to um, save that as a JPEG and then call it Texture TTV. That is your next project.